Hey, what's up, everybody? Blessings, blessings. It's Dr. Pastor Ben Lim here, and I know I'm not in my studio. Well, obvious, but I'm here uh, traveling today. I'm here in San Diego area uh, for a meeting tonight, but I'm so happy to be here. Listen, this is day two of three days of prophetic impartation, and today we're going to be talking about growing in prophetic revelation, growing in prophetic revelation. I'm really excited uh, about tonight's broadcast. Yesterday was day one, and we talked about building in the prophetic, prophetically building, and it was a great start to this three-day, uh, I guess, telethon, uh, YouTube-thon, and uh, it was a great start, and uh, we just want to welcome you. Amen? So uh, comment below where you are watching from. Help us build the room and uh, invite somebody, share this, uh, give us some hearts here. Uh, praise the Lord, of course. Um, like I said, I'm here in San Diego, and tomorrow's day three, y'all. Tomorrow's day three. I'm really excited about tomorrow. Let me just fix my hair just a little bit here. Tomorrow's day three, so I'm excited. And on the third day, there's always resurrection power, always resurrection glory. So I'm excited about these three days here. Amen. So I see Sydney, Australia. Sarah Darius, thank you for being a member. Bless you. Melissa, good to see you. Elliot, good to see you. Jackie Bird, I recognize your name from yesterday. Uh, Sonia from BC, Canada. New shout for truth. All right, thanks for becoming a new collab member. We appreciate that. It's so fun here on YouTube to see people like join and become one of our members. So fun to see that. Hey there, Marina. Hey there, Arthur Parker. Glory, glory. Melissa Shu, good to see you, our friend from Arizona. Arizona, bad fam, strong. South Korea, bless you. And listen, I want you all to pray with me because we are using my phone right now and I don't have my charger on me. So let's pray that the Lord keeps the phone supernaturally charged until I'm done with this broadcast. Can I get an amen? So pray with us. I think we're probably at 90% battery life. So let's pray, Lord, we declare long life, longevity on this battery, on this phone. This broadcast will not be hindered in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. So thanks for your love, your prayers, and your agreement. Let's continue to build the room here. Praise God. Natalie, good to see you. Amen. Amen. Hey, real quick, as we're building the room and as the room is gathering, I want to talk about our events, okay, our upcoming events. Um, uh, like I said, tomorrow, y'all, tomorrow, tomorrow is day three of three days of prophetic impartation. And did you receive last night? Did you receive yesterday? Uh, there was such a presence, such a glory last night. And uh, I'm excited to keep building in the presence, building in the glory of God from glory to glory. And yesterday, day one, we talked about uh, building prophetically. Today, we're talking about growing in prophetic revelation growing in prophetic revelation, and I will minister prophetically and minister to a number of you as the Lord leads personally. And then tomorrow, I'm going to talk about uh, expanding your prophetic anointing, okay? Experiencing the prophetic anointing, because there is an anointing to the prophetic, and uh, the prophetic has a certain anointing. So again, the anointing is the anointing of Yeshua HaMashiach, the Mashiach. However, within the anointing, there are many different specific anointings, and the prophetic anointing is one of them. And something happens when a prophetic anointing is released. Amen. Uh, but I want to remind you, tomorrow, uh, you can only join tomorrow's broadcast if you join for at least to become a kingdom or a covenant member. Okay? So, again, as we're building on our YouTube we have these three levels or three classes of membership partnerships, really, you know, and uh, if you join in the second tier, which is kingdom, or if you join the highest tier, which is covenant, then you will be able to join the private broadcast stream tomorrow. So I want to encourage you join. It's going to be awesome. And not only are you able to join tomorrow, if you are a kingdom or covenant member, but well, really, you're going to have a lot more exclusive videos and content and access, and it's going to be awesome. Amen. So again, today's 11.10, and we started yesterday 11.9. Today's 11.10. Tomorrow's 11.11. 11. 
which means double transition. So I'm believing tomorrow on 11-11, there's going to be a great, great glory in this broadcast in your life. Can I get an amen? Let's continue to build up the room. Let me know where you were watching from. Thank you, everybody, for sharing. Amen. Thanks for jumping on. I pray you are doing well. Amen. Today, I am going to talk about growing in prophetic revelation. So let's pray. We're going to jump right into this. Father, I thank you for this Friday, for the Shabbat, and where every single person is watching from, whoever is connecting with the grace that is present today. God, I ask you that you will touch and change their lives in the mighty name of Jesus. Oh, yes, we're doing announcements. I totally forgot. And then, hey, guys, sorry. Next week, I'll be in Arizona. Three events. Bang, bang, bang. I'll be in Arizona. So, all right. I'll be in Arizona with Pastor Mama Suzanne Hen. So, Lord willing, I'll be able to do a broadcast next week with Pastor Mama Suzanne Hen. She is my spiritual mother. And uh, Pastor Suzanne and Pastor Benny are my pastors. All right. My spiritual parents. So what an honor, what a grace. So that's next week, three different events, four days in a row in Arizona. So come and see me. Then November 20th, we have our next Zoom webinar. And on November 20th, we're going to talk about the doctrine, the theology of hell. Is hell real? Is hell even a real place? So if you've wondered, uh, about hell, you know, if you've wondered, you know, because many people have tried to refute it or dispute it. But if you wonder, you know, is hell even real, then I want you to join and we're going to talk about the doctrine of the theology of hell. Is hell real? And that is a free Zoom webinar. And that is November 20th. But you must register at benlimglobal.com, our website. As well, I'm going to be in Hawaii. And quick announcement, y'all, all of our conferences, the broadcasts are going to be available exclusively for all of our covenant members here on YouTube. So unlimited access to all of our online broadcasts at our on-site conferences. So like when we're in Hawaii, we're Prophet Tracy Allen Cook, December, uh, November uh, 30th, December 1st, 2nd, 3rd. When I'm in Hawaii with Prophet Tracy Allen Cook, that online broadcast is only available exclusively to our covenant members here on YouTube, right? So fly in, drive in, swim in. Come on, friends, get into glory here in Hawaii. Join us in Hawaii, myself and Prophet Tracy Allen Cook. It's going to be incredible. Or you can join us online and register, join here. Amen. As well, we do have our New Year's Eve conference uh, called Open Heavens New Year's Eve conference with Papa Gio, Georgian Banoff, and Winnie Banoff. They are known as the Apostles of Joy Global Celebration, part of the Revival Alliance. We have Georgian and Winnie Banoff, and we also have Prophet Jesse and Amy Shab and myself. And we're going to have an awesome countdown. Imagine being in the glory conference kingdom glory bang bang open heavens uh december 28th 29th 30th 31st and then we're gonna end in, we're gonna end this year in the glory of god with a holy ghost party and we're gonna step into the new hebrew new year 2024 so join us drive in all of my arizona friends drive in be a part of what god's doing let's end this year with a big bang with a big hurrah and let's step into the new year corporately in the presence of god amen well let's start arizona in the house crystal clater missionary evangelist keith bless you yes yours we hope to see you rob and melissa and gracie malaysia in the house jackie bird thank you father thank you lord so once again i want to remind you tomorrow 11 11 the third day, I'm going to talk about the prophetic anointing. And you must become a member uh, here on YouTube, either the second or the third tier, which is kingdom or covenant. Amen. If I'm going to see you tomorrow, say I'm joining. Just write that out. Praise God. Well, today, let's talk about growing in prophetic revelation. Growing in prophetic revelation. Because as prophetic people, 
One of our main jobs is to receive and release prophetic intel, okay? One of our main jobs is to discern the times and seasons, and it is to interpret that to the body of Christ. You look at the life of Joseph. Joseph received dreams, but he also interpreted Pharaoh's dreams. And not only is the receiving of revelation downloads, whether to dreams, visions, spoken word, the rhema, the word of God, not only is receiving revelation important, but knowing how to interpret and release it, that is also very important. Now, you and I were made to be good receivers. Are you a good receiver? You can only give what you have. And if you don't have, how can you properly give? You can only give what you have. And many people, especially today in 2023, we are repeating regurgitated words. We are copying what our neighbors say. We look what's going on the other camp and the other side of the grass, on the grass, on the other side. And we are copying, we're imitating, we're mimicking what they're doing, what they're saying. But friends, we must have an original grace, an original revelation from the Lord. We must carry something that, in a sense, isn't mimicked, copied, or duplicated. But we must pay the price to gain that personal revelation from the Lord. Because, hear me now. You only have authority, if you're with me today, say amen, you only have authority to speak about what you paid the price for. I'm going to say that again. You only have authority to speak about what you have paid the price for. True revelation is heavy and weighty. True revelation is not shallow. True revelation is heavy and weighty. And a revelation releases a realm. Whenever revelation comes, it's like the waves of the ocean. I was just in Hawaii last week. I'm here in San Diego, Carlsbad. I'm right across from the ocean. Too bad I'm not enjoying the sunset because I'm here with y'all. I guess too good because it's not Carl's good. It's Carl's bad, right? But revelation comes like wave after wave. And today I want to teach you not only how to catch the wave, but how to ride the wave. How do you receive revelation? I want you to repeat this after me. I am a magnet to God's revelations. Do you attract God's revelations? Are you a magnet, a magnetic force to revelation? And we're going to go into what revelation is and why revelation is important. But really what revelation means, it means to reveal something that's hidden. Something that is hidden is now revealed. Something that is veiled is now brought to the light. Amen. Something that was not known is now known. Something that is invisible is now visible. So as prophets and prophetic people, we are to reveal the glory of God. We are to reveal God's mysteries, God's blessings, God's beauty, God's plan. So once again, revelation is heavy and weighty. And every revelation that's released to you is a responsibility. I want to repeat that. Revelation is a responsibility. So God will not give you more. Hear me now. The Lord will only entrust you with more revelation when you are being responsible with that realm. When you are responsible with that realm. Every, every revelation is a realm of responsibility. Because, once again, you... You cannot say anything unless you have authority over that realm, over that subject, over that thing. And too many people, too many prophetic people, uh, they're really more pathetic 
and too many people say things that they have no authority in. It's none of your business. You have no right to talk about that. Because revelation, you must pay a price. You must tarry. You must pay a price. Why? Because revelation can be deadly. Revelation can be deadly. All right? If you're not ready to receive a revelation, then that revelation can lead you into mixture or witchcraft. Can we go deeper today? Because too many people are searching for wisdom revelation. Therefore, they go into occults. They go into false doctrine witchcraft. They open themselves up to heresies. Open themselves up to conspiracies. Jesus. Shut up, Baba. But you see, revelation is heavy and weighty. And as prophets, prophetic people, we're meant to receive revelation. We're meant to release revelation, prophetic insight, intel, predictions. And once again, revelation is like waves of the ocean. It keeps coming, it keeps coming. But are you able, willing to stay in the place of prayer? to continue to receive that revelation. Once again, revelation, number one, it is weighty and it can be deadly. If you don't have the right heart, the right spirit, then that revelation can expose people or it can hurt people. Revelation must be girded with self-control, must be girded with the spirit of humility and death. So number one, revelation is weighty and heavy. Number two, revelation is a responsibility. Number three, revelation is a realm. And number four, revelation means to reveal what was hidden. I declare now every hidden enemy will be exposed. I declare now every hidden agenda, plot plan of the wicked one will be exposed. And I declare that in this season, in this month of November, come on somebody, in this month, the Lord will reveal, release, download dreams, visions, and encounters into your life in the name of Jesus. Are you listening? Do you have big Dumbo ears like satellite dishes? Speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. Are you a good listener? Are you a good receiver? Once again, you cannot give something that you did not receive. And if you want to receive true, genuine, divine revelation, then you must pay the price for it. If you're with me today, I want to say amen. Continue to help us to build the room and the algorithm, like I said tonight. I'm not going to be going too long because we don't know how the battery life on my phone is. But that just whets your appetites for tomorrow. Now, let's talk about what is revelation. What is revelation? Amen. We're going to go to some scripture here. We're going to go to some scripture here. Let's go over to Ephesians 1.17. Ephesians 1.17. Now, this is a very famous passage. Apostle Paul is writing to the church of Ephesus. I pray that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you the spirit of wisdom, and revelation in the knowledge of him may give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation. So here's Apostle Paul. He's praying for the church of Ephesus. I'm praying that God will give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation. You see, apostles many times are like the spirit of wisdom. Prophets many times are like the spirit of revelation. Wisdom walks out the revelation. Wisdom walks, revelation reveals. 
And so many times the apostles move with wisdom to build. Prophets move with revelation. But here's the Paul's point. He's praying. I pray that you have wisdom, the spirit of wisdom and revelation will become your best friends. If you receive it now, say amen. Revelation. Praise the Lord. Now that word revelation in the Greek. That word revelation in the Greek, it is apocalypsis. I want to say apocalypsis. I love this word. And that really is the name of the last book of the Bible, otherwise known as revelation. Apocalyptos, apocalypse. Now, I know a lot of people are afraid of the apocalypse, but did you know you are the apocalypse? <laughs> did you know that you, the church, we are the apocalyptos? And what that word apocalypse, revelation, means, it means an uncovering and a revealing. An uncovering and a revealing. Imagine like, thank you, Lord. You're at a beautiful movie theater or you're at a beautiful theater and the greatest show of all is about to take place. Everyone's getting seated. And you got the beautiful thick red velvet curtains up front. The lights grow dim, spotlight comes on and then the velvet curtains begin to shh, apocalyptos. <laughs> and that's what the book of Revelation is. John the Revelator, come on, his name is John the Revelator. John the Beloved is John the Revelator. So you want to grow in prophetic revelation? Grow in love. The Lord taught me this years ago. He said, we revelate to relate. So what if you have revelation about angels, mysteries, you know, the moon and the sky? So what if you have, did you learn to love? So the more you love, the more you grow in revelation. The more God trusts you with revelation. Remember, like I said earlier, revelation is a responsibility. And it can be deadly because it's heavy. Praise God. If you're with me today, say amen. Come on, church, give us some hearts here today. Glory to God. I'm telling you, I feel like these are like little webinars. I don't have enough time in one hour to finish this. But it is what it is. Apocalyptos, you are the apocalypse of God. Now, isn't it incredible, John the Revelator or John the Apostle of Love, he put his head on the bosom, the chest of Jesus. Hear me now, when you hear his heart or when you are close to his heart, then all things will be revealed. God's heart intentions, the Father's, the heart of the Father will be revealed because it's intimacy, it's closeness. Revelation comes by relationship. So if I don't know you, why would I share my inmost deepest secrets with you if I'm not close with you? Trust is earned in relationship. So therefore, as our relationship deepens and grows, then I feel more comfortable because not just a feeling, but because there is a trust that's been built. Therefore, I'm able to open up and share, reveal more of my heart, my secrets with you. Do you want God <laughs> to share his secrets with you? Do you want the Lord to share revelations with you? Revelations from his word, things that you've never seen before, where the word of God just jumps off of the pages. Do you want to see in the spirit? Do you, do you want to experience the glory realm of God? My gosh, if that's you, say amen. But you see, John the beloved, his head was on the bosom. This is so good, y'all. I'm getting rocked right now as I'm talking to you. The head of John the Revelator was on the heart of Jesus. And when you are close to his heart, all things will be revealed. 
when you're close to the heart of Jesus, the Lord will trust you with details, spe specific specificities, revelations. He will trust you with things that no one else knows. Can I get an amen? And you know what? I've, I've said as many times, prophets, more than just being an oracle or a mouthpiece, prophets are God's friends. Prophets are good listeners. <laughs> no, hey, prophets should have bigger ears than they have bigger mouths. Because prophets are listening for the word, the voice of the Lord. Prophets are looking out. They're watching and praying. Prophets are on the lookout. When is the next wave coming? When is the next wave of revelation? When is, when is, when is the next move of God coming? Prophets are waiting and on the lookout to receive like a kite in the wind or a sailboat, a parasail in the wind. Jesus, thank you, Lord. I will wait for you. I will wait for you. The prophets and prophetic people are really friends of God. And because they're friends of God, the Lord is able to share with them personal, specific, prophetic wisdom, intel, insight, and revelation. So let's say like uh, I ministered over a number of people yesterday on day one. Why would the Lord share those things with me? If he did not trust me. Why would God reveal those things about these people if he did not trust me? Trust me to be a good servant. Trust me to be a good steward. To not manipulate. To not exploit. To help cover and edify and build. Rather than tear down and expose and shame and make you feel vulnerable. Amen. Revelation is a responsibility. Praise God. So I want you to say, I am God's apocalyptos. You are the uncovering because the veil has been torn. The veil has been torn in the body of Jesus. So therefore, he is the revelation. It's not Russia, China, Iran, Israel. It's Jesus, Yeshua. It's you, Christ in you for the hope of glory. So the greatest revelation is actually the bride and the bridegroom. <laughs> That's the greatest revelation. The greatest revelation is love. It's the cross. Thank you, Lord. Jesus. Help me to finish this today, Lord. Jesus. Robo, 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 sata. <coughs> Revelation is a seed. And today I've titled this growing in prophetic revelation because like a wave, it builds. Revelation is a seed. It grows. It builds. The more you steward that grace, that revelation, then the more God builds or adds on and trusts you with more. And then that gift, that realm, your ability to see, feel, perceive, discern, it begins to grow and heighten. Are you ready to see today? Are you ready to receive? Thank you, Lord. All things will be uncovered to the one whose heart is pure. All things will be revealed to the one who lives in the light. My gosh, come on, you got to pray in the Holy Ghost. Pray in the Holy Ghost. Thank you, Jesus. I, I want to give a few more verses and then we're going to keep revelating and talking about growing in prophetic revelation. But if you're receiving today, I want you to say amen. Um, I love this. Let's go to the OT, Old Testament. <laughs> Shout about top. 
Let's go over to Daniel 8.15. Daniel 8.15. Good to see you, Lindy. Hello there, Marilyn. Charmaine, bless you. Apostle Rob Barbo, good to see you. Cecilia, good to see you. Thank you, Father. Shannon, good to see you. Let's go over to Daniel 8.15. When I, Daniel, had seen the vision, I sought to understand it. And behold, stood before me one having the appearance of a man. Isn't that incredible? When I, Daniel, had seen the vision, are you seeing a vision? Are you seeing visions? This morning, it's incredible. I woke up from an incredible dream with uh, as a thousand Korea. You know, one year ago, this is so interesting. One year ago, exactly one year ago today, I was in Korea. I was ministering at the Prayer Mountain of Dr. Yonggi Cho exactly one year ago. My gosh. And this morning, I woke up from a dream that I was in Korea. And my friend in Korea was in the dream. In the dream this morning. Here, Daniel says, I had seen the vision. God wants to reveal details, specificities, words of knowledge, dreams, visions, things that are about to take place. He wants to reveal. He wants to show you. He wants to uncover. He wants you to know. All right, hear me now. So, revelation is an invitation. Come on, someone say, preach, Dr. Ben. Revelation is an invitation. Revelation is an invitation to the future. So, when God begins to release revelation, it's literally like God is saying, peekaboo. He is giving you a peek into the future. My gosh. So when you live in the realm of revelation, because hear me now, revelation comes to you. The spirit of revelation comes upon you. It, can, it comes to you like a wave. Or you can live in the realm of revelation. And when you live in the realm of revelation, you're literally living in the future. When you are in the realm of revelation, the wheel within the wheel, you are in the future. So you're actually living and operating from the future. You're not even here no more. So not only does God show you what's about to take place, but he invites you to the future. He invites you to be the head and not the tail. Why? Because his friends, he says, come up here. Come up higher, my beloved. My friends, I want you where I am. I want you where I am. And where I am is the future. I want you to be with me where I am. And that's in Revelation. That's in the uncovering. That's the secrets. But how many of you <laughs> get discouraged? How many of you are stuck at the level of milk rather than meat? How many of you are stuck at milk level? What does that mean? You're still a baby. You're still breastfeeding with your mother. Instead of you actually being able to receive the heavier, weightier things of God. Somebody said, amen. I want to upgrade. I want to grow in prophetic revelation. I want to grow in the realms of, I want, I want God to trust me. I want to live in the realms of revelation. If you're with me today, I want to say amen. And so many times whenever I minister, it's like the word of the Lord con continues to come upon me and then it just keeps opening up or being uncovered. It just keeps getting uncovered as I stay in that place. 
instead of feeling anxious, acting nervous like I have to perform, as I stay in that place boldly as a son, revelation just keeps coming as I'm in love with no other agenda. Because hear me now, God wants to reveal to you more than you want to receive. God wants to reveal to you more than you want to receive. Can I say that for the people in the back? The Lord wants to reveal to you more than you want to receive. It's his joy. It's his delight to give bread to his children. It's his joy for you to share, be a partaker in that glory. He loves to reveal to you more than you love to receive. Can I get an amen? I pray that the Lord reveals to you today, tonight, wherever you're watching from, that there will be deep revelation, deep calls out into deep, that the beauty, the glory of Jesus will be manifested in your life. So and say amen. <clears throat> Another verse here, Daniel chapter 10, verse 8. Daniel 10, verse 8. I love this. Daniel 10, 8. Therefore, I was left alone, and I saw this great vision, and there remained no strength in me, <laughs> for my comeliness was turned in me into corruption, and I retained no strength. Now, this is unusual. Because the prophet Daniel is saying, I was left alone, number one, and then I saw a great vision. Number three, and then it zapped all the strength out of me. Isn't it interesting? Whenever you are in a realm of revelation or a trance or an encounter or a dream, many times it zaps the strength out of you. Because your physical entity cannot contain the spiritual supernatural realm. That's why when we die, our body dies. We will have a new body of glory, a new resurrected body. Because the spirit of God, the spirit of glory, spirit of resurrection will always be new, but our body cannot contain it. Our body cannot contain it. But here in Daniel chapter 10, verse 8, the word says, therefore I was left alone and saw a great vision. I want to say great vision. Great vision comes when you are alone. Daniel received experience, saw great vision when he was alone. Why is the Bible very specific? <laughs> Do you think it's an accident that Daniel was alone, that the Bible actually mentioned this? No. When Daniel was alone, he saw a great vision. Many times the people around you will become distractors to you seeing greatly or seeing in the spirit. Seeing great vision will cost you. Being a person of great vision will cost you. Thank you, Lord. And when you are alone, that is many times where God speaks to you the loudest, the clearest, the most accurate time when you are alone. Three times a day, Daniel would go in and close the door and pray with his face towards Jerusalem. Jesus will go up the mountain to pray and seek the Father alone. Come on, somebody. There's something happens when you seek the Father in secret. When you are alone. So if you like to be alone, if you're a little bit of an introvert, if you're a little bit of a weirdo, let the Lord speak to you. Like Adam walked with God in the garden of the day where, where Enoch walked with the Lord. Like David was a shepherd boy in the prairies and meadows and valleys with God. 
and he would just sing songs and hymnals to the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. If you received us today, I want to say amen. Once again, true revelation is not copied, mimicked, or regurgitated. You cannot copy and paste what the next famous preacher, prophet, prophetic person on Instagram, on YouTube is saying. No, you have to dial in because true revelation is costly. It is weighty. It is heavy. And true revelation releases a realm. And not everybody is ready to step into that realm. Are you with me today? Are you with me? Once again, I want to repeat to say, I am God's apocalypse. An apocalypse isn't a scary event. Apocalypse is an ongoing love dance. It is an everlasting dance of love where God reveals, he shows, shows off. <laughs> ongoing. Can I get an amen? Listen, friends, do me a favor. Can you give this live broadcast a like as well? Consider subscribing and being a follower, subscriber of this YouTube channel as well. If you feel led, we would love to have you as one of our members here on YouTube. Remember, tomorrow, day three, the prophetic anointing on the third day of prophetic impartation. I'm going to talk about the prophetic anointing. Tomorrow, 11-11, is only available to those who are a kingdom or a covenant member. So please join because you will have continual access to even more exclusive content. Isn't it so good today? Isn't that so juicy? It's so juicy. Amen. So the Lord wants to reveal his secrets. And he wants to share his secrets like a friend. And when he reveals his secrets, you are now entrusted with revelation. And revelation is power. Revelation is power. Now, let's talk about how do you receive revelation? Okay, how? How do you receive revelation? Okay, number one, you have to be in the Word of God. The written word of God was once the words that God spoke. And it is continuously divinely inspired. For every word, every scripture is divinely inspired, breathed on by God. It's the breath of God. So you grow in revelation, number one, by being in the word. Remember, God speaks loudest through his word. So if you want to receive revelation, visions, dreams, encounters, if you want to receive intel, insights, then number one, foundationally, you must be in his word. Amen. You must be in his word. Number two, you grow in prophetic revelation or you receive, right? Number two. By seeking the things of God. The Bible says, Matthew 6, 33, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. All these things will be added unto you as well. The Bible says to pursue the gifts of the spirit. So you must have a heart of desire, a hunger for the things of God. So when you're seeking, hungry, knocking on the door, when you're desiring God, speak to me. God, show me. Give me your word. Give me your revelation. I need daily bread. Speak to me, Father. Show me things. Show me things that I've never seen before. I love this passage. I believe it's Psalm 119. Psalm 119, verse 18. Psalm 119, verse 18. Here the Bible says, open my eyes so that I may see wonderful things in your law. 
Come on, this is a psalmist, Psalm 119, verse 18. Open my eyes so that I may see the wonderful things in your law. Open my eyes. Someone say amen. Open my eyes. So number two, you see. Number three, you receive revelation and you grow in prophetic revelation. Hear me now. By being in the manifest presence of God. When you are in God's presence, he speaks. Remember the story of Samuel, where the young boy Samuel was in the presence of God next to the ark, close to the ark. And as Samuel was in that location, say location, as Samuel was in that location, God spoke, God encountered. The word of the Lord came. Your sweet spot, your secret place. You receive revelation by being in the manifest presence of God. Isn't it interesting? Sometimes you have to pray until it lifts, right? So you're praying, you're doing intercession, you're worshiping, you're praising, you're thanking God, and all of a sudden you feel that thing lift off of you, and now the glory is on you. And now God begins to speak, and you listen. I love that. In the manifest presence, everything is revealed. Nothing is hidden in the presence of the Lord. Amen. So number one, you receive and grow in prophetic revelation by being in the word. Number two, you receive and grow in prophetic revelation by seeking after, desiring, and hungering after. Number three. You receive revelation by being in the presence of the Lord. Be under the glory. Be under the anointing. Number four, you receive revelation by sitting under a prophet, mentor, man, woman of God. Their revelation becomes yours. Their covering like an umbrella, it covers you. And now that grace is easily imparted to you. Now, I do believe there are predestined relationships. You see, the devil sends you counterfeit relationships, but God also sends you preordained relationships, friendships, partnerships, covenants that have been predestined before time. I also believe there are mentors, fathers, mothers of the faith, that God has ordained, destined for life. Look at Elijah and Elisha. Look at Moses and Joshua. There are mentors, and when you sit under them and serve them, you receive that grace. Their ability to receive becomes your ability to receive. And hear me now, the revelation they paid the price for becomes yours. So think about this. Think about this. In uh, maybe maybe in the 60s, you had the Word of Faith movement. That revelation of faith. In the 70s and 80s, there was a revelation of teaching, sound doctrine, televangelism began. In the 90s, there was revelation about miracles, signs, and wonders, apostles, prophets. Revelation builds. And that generation's revelation is now passed on to the next. And so you receive revelation by the covering, the mentorship, apostleship, by the prophet you sit under or you are connected to. Can I get an amen? Samuel, as a young boy, began to hear God call his name. But Eli, the priest, his spiritual father, helped guide, direct, and discern that it was the voice of the Lord. Number four, you receive and grow in prophetic revelation by sitting under a prophet. And then number five, you receive and grow in prophetic revelation by being in rest and prayer. 
being at rest in prayer. Now, this is something that many people do not talk about, but the realm of rest, the finished work of the cross, is imperative for us New Testament believers. It really is the cornerstone, the bedrock of our faith and foundation, the finished work, the realm of rest, the seventh day. Amen. Many people are still working and toiling and laboring under the curse of the world of the flesh. But we must live and move from the realm of rest. When you are at rest and peace, then you can easily and best receive revelation. My God, are you hearing me today? When your mind is not distracted, when your heart is not clouded, you're not feeling emotional, so you're not making stuff up like witchcraft. You're not being presumptuous. But when your mind and your heart is at rest, even your body is at rest, at peace with God, then you are able to easily receive the fresh vision, the fresh word of the Lord. Prophets who are always in warfare in the second heavens. You're always doing warfare. Prophets who are always in warfare in the second heavens. They will never fully receive the revelation of the third heavens. When you're in the third heavens, that's where you receive abundant revelation. Second heavens is the warfare, the intercession, the pushing. You got to push, you got to press. But once again, you pray until it lives. And then when the glory comes, when the word comes, when the rhema comes, you let it lather upon you. You let it come upon you. Don't stop the spout. Don't turn off the spout. Just come under that anointing and just drink and receive. Someone say amen. Amen. Hopefully somebody or Dolores, you can write down the five ways for you to receive and grow in revelation. But the more you are at rest, then the more easily you can receive from God. More easily. I remember going to places like Disneyland and Six Flags years ago. These people, their guards were already down. They're already open to have fun. Their imaginations are already spinning. So all these people were easily receiving healing and salvation because their guards were down. Thank you, Lord. God bless you, Shannon. God bless you. Let's give it up for Sister Shannon. Revelation, my friends. Hear me now. Revelation will carry you to your next destination. Can I say that again? Revelation will carry you to the next destination. Revelation is the grace of God that not only speaks to you, but it also empowers you. It empowers you. Jesus. And we must be good receivers. Remember, good listeners, Dumbo ears, satellite dishes. We must be receiving, perceiving, healing, gaining. Thank you, Lord. Because the more you're able to receive, the more you're able to give. The more revelation you have, the more authority to have you have. Revelation carries you to your next destination. And the Lord is a revealer of secrets and mysteries. Are you ready to receive revelation? I want to give you a few more points here. If you're with me today, say amen. Come on, keep praying that my phone does not die. All right, because I still want to pray with you and pray over you. So I, I may need another 20 to 30 more minutes. Miss Dolores, so stay with me. <laughs> Number one, the prophet is to reveal these five things, okay? 
A prophet, a prophetic person, reveals these five things. Number one, the prophet reveals the mind, the heart, and the will of God. The prophet reveals the mind, the heart, and the will of God. <laughs> so a prophetic person uncovers, uncovers, unveils. Remember the movie theater, the theater with the red velvet drapes? Opens up a prophet, prophetic, just their presence. Unveils the mind, heart, and the will of God. And you might say, Dr. Ben, isn't that the word of God? Well, absolutely. The word of God is the will of God. However, what is the Lord thinking right now? Because he's not a dead God. He's a living God. And God has feelings, emotions, thoughts right here, right now. So a prophet, number one, reveals the heart, mind, and the will of God. Number two, the prophet reveals details about times and seasons. The Issachar anointing, which I consider myself an Issachar prophet. Really, I'm a times and seasons, signs and wonders prophet, right? So when it comes to the times and seasons, that's one of my main fortes. I'm of the tribe of Issachar, right? So the prophet, number two, reveals details, predictions about times and seasons. Times and seasons. Reveals, uncovers what is to come, what you can expect. Jesus says, you can look at the sky and the clouds and see that rain is coming. Can you not tell the signs of the times? Number three, the prophet reveals and exposes the plans of the enemy, the hidden plans of the enemy. So remember, Jezebel is and was a false prophet. Think about the false prophet. Jezebel is a false prophetess. So it takes a prophet to battle a false prophet. Can I go deeper here today? It takes a prophetic office mantle to battle and to take down, take out a false prophetic office, false prophetic anointing. So Jezebel is a false prophet, prophetess, and Elijah was a true prophet of Elohim, Hashem, of Jehovah Yahweh, of God. So a prophet reveals, exposes the hidden plots of the enemy. So prophetic people reveal what the enemy is planning. Underground, in the ground, in darkness. Remember, whenever the devil does something, he does it in darkness. It's called the deeds of darkness. We're sons and daughters of light. So we live in the realm of revelation. The enemy, the devil, lives hiding, lurking in the shadows. The father of lies. Demons of darkness. So a prophet reveals, exposes the hidden plots of the enemy. Now why is that important? Because it helps us to pray and to intercede and to be a sharpshooter and to take out the devil before he comes near you and your family. Number four, the prophet reveals, amen, the prophet reveals areas in which the church and believer must grow. The prophet reveals areas in which the church and the believer must grow. Now, whenever your humanity, hear me now, I know this is deep stuff. Whenever your humanity is exposed, it is not to shame you, but it is to lead you to the glory of God's divinity. I'm going to say that again. Whenever your humanity, look at me, 
Woe is me. So whenever your humanity is revealed, it's supposed to lead us to the glory of God's divinity. So prophetic people exposes the heart of men, causes people to be insecure and the things to manifest that needs to change. Many times they're not mad at you. That spirit of anger is just being manifested because you're around. So therefore you're triggering them allegedly somehow. But a prophetic person reveals what areas must grow in the church and individually. And then number five, a prophet reveals the beauty and the glory and the holiness of Jesus Christ. Somebody say amen. The fifth point, the fifth thing that the prophet reveals, which is the most important, reveals the beauty, the glory, and the holiness of Jesus Christ. The prophet always points you to the Lord, not to himself, not to herself. A true prophetic voice always reveals Jesus, uncovers Jesus, shows off Jesus. A true prophetic voice leaves you in awe of the Lord Jesus Christ. My gosh. Someone say amen. Prophetic revelation, my friends. Is heavy ready. And it is the realm where God speaks, communicates, connects, empowers, edifies. And you and I, we can grow in prophetic revelation. We can grow in revelation. Day one, day two, day three. Like your muscles can grow. Like you know, physically, your stature can grow in girth and size and dimension and weight and height. So can the prophetic revelation on your life. Where God trusts you and trusts you. To not only receive, but to be a conduit of that grace. To be a revealer of that grace. Remember, revelation is a seed. And what are you doing with that seed? What are you doing with the word that is hidden in your heart? Prophecy reveals and grows and shows. Prophecy. If somebody can just write down all of those five things that prophets prophetic people reveal but it's so important for us to be good stewards of this grace because the more we are the more we will receive and the more god will trust you open the eyes of my heart lord open the eyes of my heart i want to see you I want to see you. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you. I want to see you. <laughs> to see you high and lifted up. Shining in the light of your glory. Pour out your power and love as we sing. Holy, holy, only to see you high and lifted up, shining in the light of your glory. Pour out your power and love as we sing. Holy, holy, only. Let me ask you are you a good receiver? Are you a good receiver? Remember, God wants to reveal to you more than you want to receive from him. Are you a good receiver? Are you growing in prophetic revelation? Are you growing in the realm of revelation? Well, I want to pray for you today, my friends. I want to pray for you. 
if this broadcast today, day two of prophetic impartation, if this blessed you and spoke to minister to you, I want you to say amen. But just like John the beloved, the revelator, because he was the lover of Jesus, he became the revealer of Jesus. You will only reveal what you love. Remember, you are the apocalypse. We the church, we are the apocalypse. And get ready for the greatest show that the world has ever seen. The greatest show of our lives, the greatest movie, the greatest song is going to be released. And that is Christ in you for the hope of glory. And I declare 2024 will be the best year of uncovering, unveiling, revelation in your life. If you believe it, say amen. Now, I want you to put your hand over your heart. And I want to pray for you now. Father, thank you. Touch your people. Touch your children. Thank you, Lord. Bless their lives and their hearts. May our hearts be sensitive. May it be soft. I hear the Lord saying, I am destroying the old heart of stone. I am softening your new heart of flesh. Where you will be able to have childlike faith, joy, and innocence. Thank you, Jesus. That's why I continue to pray in the Holy Ghost. I see healing coming. Restoration coming. Remember, are you a good receiver or do you reject the word of God? Do you reject the things of God? Are you a good receiver? Do you soak it up? Do you just are you a good receiver? He ronda rabata fire of the Holy Ghost. Ruska tarabrata. Thank you. Now put your hands on your ears. Thank you, Jesus. I declare these ears will hear the word of the Lord. These ears will hear the word of God. These ears will be attentive to the word of Jesus Christ. Now put your hand over your eyes. Father, I declare, my God, I feel the glory. I declare right now, Jesus, reveal and show us your glory. Show these people what must take place. Come up higher, my beloved. Come up higher. Thank you, Jesus. I declare every hidden agenda and enemy against you is now being exposed. God is about to expose. He's about to show up. Show. He's about to reveal areas in your life, in your heart, in your ministry, in your business that you must change. You must grow into. You must upgrade. You must improve. Thank you, Lord, that we do not live in darkness or in ignorance. But we live in the realm of revelation light. We live in the realm of revelation light. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, I want you to keep praying in the Holy Ghost. I'm going to begin to pray for some people right now. Can the Lord trust you with details, specificities, revelation? Or are you going to puff up yourself? Are you going to boast in them? Are you going to try to show up and say, look at me, look at what God showed me. I'm posting on social media for the body of Christ. Na, 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 na. If that's the attitude, then because the Holy Spirit is sensitive like a dove, he will begin to pull himself away. Because these secrets are not things to boast about. <laughs> but these secrets are things to cherish to be grateful for. Someone said, amen. I declare open heavens over your life. Open heavens over your life. In the name of Jesus.
Come on, I want you to pray in the Holy Ghost. I want to pray over a couple of people here. Apostle Rob Barbo, lift up your hand, my friend. I know you. But I see where there's been a thorn and there's been an enemy, like an antagonizing spirit. But the Lord is going to deal with this hidden enemy, Apostle Barbo. Come on, if you want me to pray for you, I want you to give this broadcast a like and I want you to comment, pray for me. And also, please subscribe and consider being a member. But Apostle Robert Barbeau, I saw the Lord dealing with this flesh. And in fact, there's, excuse me, dealing with this thorn. And there's two thorns. One is a person. And one is in you. One thorn is in you. And the other thorn is a person. But I hear the Lord saying he's going to remove these thorns and he's also going to strengthen you with grace. My grace is made perfect in your weakness. So he's going to strengthen you with grace. Thank you, Lord, where this thorn will eventually become a blessing. The evil, the bad that they planned against you, that it was against you, is now turning into good. Amen. And I even see knives in your back being pulled out, Apostle Robert, where you felt backstabbed. Thank you, Sheptiani, for upgrading your membership to Covenant. God bless you. Let's give it up for Sheptiani. But I saw the Lord pulling out knives from your back where you felt backstabbed and betrayed this year. Amen. So I pull out those knives from your back. Ta! Heal it in Jesus' name. Heal it in Jesus' name. Restore your son in the mighty name of Jesus. Restore your son. In the name of Jesus. If you receive it, Apostle Rob, say amen. That makes sense to you. Cecilia Perez, you know, you've been a long follower of this ministry. Let me pray for you, Cecilia. Cecilia, I see you flying. I see you flying. I even see like a stewardess, like a flight attendant stewardess, but I see you flying. And I really sense the Lord's going to give you, he's going to open up a major door for you, Cecilia. And it's a door to travel. It's a door. I see Europe. Okay. Of course, I know you have a thing with Korea. But I see a promotion, an upgrade coming to you. And a door you've been waiting on for a long time is about to open. A door you've been waiting on is about to open, Cecilia. So, Lord, bless your daughter. Bless your daughter. And, yes, you will be a blessing to your mother. You will be a blessing to your mother. And I don't know if I asked you this before, if I even know. Do you have a brother, Cecilia? Do you have a brother? I know you came to Glorify Church of Sanford, Orlando when I ministered before. But do you have a brother, Cecilia? I want you to comment to me. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, people of God. Stay connected. Stay tuned in the glory. Cecilia says, I do. Does he play soccer like football? Because I keep seeing like a soccer ball, black and white spots. Does your brother play soccer? But I believe, Cecilia, even as the Lord, I believe, is showing me your brother. There's going to be like your brother, I see. Your brother, God's going to do such a great work in your brother, Cecilia, 
Where I hear the Lord say he's going to be the man of the house. The man of the house. He's going to be the man of the house. He's going to man up and be the man of the house. God bless you. Let me know if that makes sense, especially if he played soccer or likes soccer or something, because I kept seeing the soccer ball. I want to pray over. Thank you, Jesus. It's interesting. Today, as I wanted to pray for people, the numbers dropped. Yesterday, as I said, I'm praying for people, the numbers increase. Is that interesting? There's somebody I wanted to pray for here. Thank you, Jesus. Daniel Tega, Daniel Tega, pray for me. I need healing. Oh, it was Kimberly Brakefield. But Daniel Tega, lift up your hands. Father, bless your son. Heal him from the top of his head to the sole of his feet. I pray every area where his heart has been hurt, may you heal him and restore him. I declare over you, Daniel, that God is restoring your joy. He is restoring your joy. And as the joy of the Lord is your strength, as that joy is restored, uh -huh, the healing will come in Jesus' name. Listen, I want to pray for a few more people, but listen, right now, if you're blessed, say amen. Friends, I want to remind you, tomorrow is 11-11, day three of prophetic impartation. These broadcasts have been so rich. Yesterday, today, I've been so rich. Like, I wish I could go long today, but I'm on a time restraint today, which is a good thing, kind of, isn't it? But tomorrow, in order to join, you must become a kingdom or a covenant member here on YouTube. So partner with us by faith. Okay, we have 61 people watching, but I'm going to talk about the prophetic anointing tomorrow. And it is the third day. It's the crescendo. All right. It's been building every day. I'm strategically teaching you these things every day to build in the presence of glory of God. So tomorrow on day three, I'm going to talk about the prophetic anointing. Amen. And in order for you to watch it, access it, you must, you must become a YouTube member either as a kingdom or a covenant. But either way, I want to invite you, encourage you, please consider even being a collab member. Please consider becoming a member here on YouTube. So you could go ahead and do that right now. But friends, today, right now, in this moment, I want to open up a time for you to sow, to bless the Lord. Did you receive today? Remember, you and I were meant to be good receivers. The more we receive, the more we can give. The more we receive, and we cannot give what we do not receive. So today, I believe there's a realm of revelation, a wheel within the wheel that's been released. And even on this Friday, I can't even believe it's Friday. It feels like a Monday. But on this Friday, on this Shabbat, the Lord is bringing you into rest. And he's going to baptize you with the spirit of revelation. Amen. As you're getting your seed ready, as you sow into this ministry, this atmosphere, this anointing tonight, I want you to comment prophetic to signify that you are sowing unto the Lord and into this moment of prophetic revelation. Comment prophetic as you sow, amen. Comment prophetic as you sow. They're saying it's 11-11 in Korea. AJ, how do you do that? How do you do what? So become a member? I'm sure our admin will comment to you, respond to you. How do you? Sorry. 
Hey, friends, if you want to become a collab kingdom or covenant, you want to, those are the three levels of membership here on YouTube. Uh, we have pinned it to the top. It's pinned, okay? So go ahead and click the pin and do that. But even now, as you're sowing, as you're giving to the Lord, we have put up the graphic to give and we're posting the way to give. And I want you to comment prophetic as you sow. Jackie Bird says, I was trying to become a member. I was having problems with it. Thank you, Lord. Marilyn, bless you. Daniel Bone, Hendra, bless you. Sonia Dion, bless you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Shannon Boozman, bless you. And like I said, I want to pray over a few more people before we close tonight. And it's a miracle. Thanks to your prayers, my phone, which I'm using right now because I'm traveling. I don't have a cord to charge it right now. It is miraculously, miraculously still working. So let's give the Lord some praise for that. Amen. I want to give another minute or so for you to sow. And like I instructed you, please comment prophetic as you sow tonight in this atmosphere. Amen. And as well, I want to encourage you, you must become a kingdom or covenant member here on YouTube in order to join us tomorrow. I know it seems like a number of you are having uh, difficulties joining, but the Lord will make a way. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Laura from Hawaii. Oh, you just read that a pond in Hawaii turned red due to algae. Interesting. Yep. Thank you, Jesus. I also cannot find where you could join once you click the link. That Shannon Moosman. Crystal Kim, bless you. So it looks like a number of people are having difficulty joining as a member. Lord willing, y'all figure it out. All right, you got Jesus and the Holy Ghost and you got Google. I mean, how can you not figure this out? Come on, guys. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. But I want to pray for that lady. I believe her name was like Kimberly. I don't know if you're still on here, Kimberly. Kimberly Brakefield, if you're still here, I want you to comment something and I want to pray for you here. Kimberly Brakeman, Brakefield. Once again, all of my members, I'm so happy to see you. All of our sowers, followers, please subscribe. Give this broadcast a like. Amen. Follow me here on YouTube. Like I said, this coming year, we're going to be pushing YouTube strong. We're going to get that 100K easy in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Kimberly, are you still here, Kimberly? Yes, you are. Awesome. Bless Kimberly Brakefield. Lift up your hand, sister. I see just a spirit of wisdom that's upon you. And I see such a natural joy of the Lord. You have a generational blessing over your life. You have a generational inheritance over your life, Kimberly. And I see... Um, yeah, just an inner joy in your spirit. You're such a strong woman. You're su such a strong lady. And I see you carrying weight and burden on your shoulders. But truly, the burden is light and the yoke is easy. And literally, I see you like riding shotgun with Jesus. And uh, like you're just having a, a fit. You're having the time of your life. Just working with God, walking with God, driving with God. Amen. I just see over you, Kimberly, that you are a faithful steward. You are a hard worker. And you are caring, like, you are caring financial blessing for your family. You are the breadwinner for your family. So bless you in the joy of the Lord, my friend, and continue spreading that joy. And I declare over you, Kimberly, good news is coming to you. 
Like I saw like a credit score. And I just feel like God's going to release good news over you and your credit score. God bless you, Kimberly. Let me know if that makes sense. Friends, I want to pray over one more person. Amen. Thank you, Father. And remember, you can only join tomorrow, day three. And you know what? If you are a kingdom or covenant member, it's not just tomorrow, even though tomorrow is going to be so scrumptedly umptious. It's going to be so finger licking good. But you will now have access to other exclusive videos and content. We are building this YouTube here. Crystal Clayton, thank you. Bless you. Yeah, Crystal, let me pray for you, dear. Let me pray for you, sister. Crystal Clayton, I saw where a season of struggle is now turning into a season of joy. I saw over you, Crystal, where there was some pressure or like oppression, like a bully spirit, antagonizing spirit. Or even in the last season, Crystal, you felt like this unnecessary, unusual pressure or burden. But that's where diamonds are birthed and born. And I hear, the, I, yeah, your name's Crystal. I saw you becoming a diamond. That pressure, like in the next season, you're going to shine bright. In the next season, you're going to shine like a diamond. And I saw, I saw a new vision coming to you. The Lord's going to give you a new vision. Let me ask you a question, Crystal, and just please respond. Do you, is there some kind of breathing issue, sister? Do you have some kind of breathing issue, Crystal Clater? I, I just saw your lungs, I believe, and God's going to expand your lungs and release breath, life, and healing into your body. I heard the Lord say, you will not be exasperated. You will not run out of breath. But you will run and not grow weary. You will walk and not grow faint. So I speak life and breath. Healing over your mind, your body, and your lungs. In Jesus' name, amen. Crystal Clater, please be uh, more clear. Uh, crystal clear. Crystal clear to her. Friends, I love you all. Thanks for joining today. Subscribe. Like this video. I can't wait to see you tomorrow. It's already been so incredible the last two days. I hope you've enjoyed. Amen. Remember, tomorrow, day three, I'm going to talk about prophetic anointing. And you must be a YouTube kingdom member or covenant member. It's just the beginning, y'all. I love you all. Thank you. Bless you. I hope you enjoyed and received today. Comment in the chat group, even afterwards, what you learned and received today. Are you a good receiver? Is something blocking the reception? in your soul, in your spirit. Love you all. Bless you. Can't wait to see you tomorrow. If I'm going to see you tomorrow, I want to say I'm joining. Say I'm joining. Amen. Let's give it up for Miss Dolores in the background, working hard as she always does. Let's give some hearts for Miss Dolores, our producer, our CTO of Benlam Ministries. Amen. Love you all. Bless you. Shalom, shalom. I hope to see you tomorrow. Here, day three of prophetic impartation, or I hope to see you soon. God bless. Shabbat Shalom.